Welcome to the final session of Dream Big. This session is the most important and the most fun because it's about giving the greatness of God away. He has called each one of you to dream big, not for your own glory or success, but so that other people might know His love. Jenny has some challenging scripture to share about leadership and community. Are you ready? Let's first listen as Allison talks about how God used her camp counselors to inspire her to use her gifts and follow God's leading. I was raised in a Christian household. I just kind of went through the motions of being Christian. I knew all the books of the Bible. I could sing all the hymns. I could tell you facts, but I never actually had a relationship with Jesus. I went to camp when I was younger. I saw my counselors and the people around me in the community acting different. And I was like, y'all are acting so differently and y'all are just so happy and joyful. And why, why are you like this? And they told me about how there was really something different about them and that was Jesus. And having a relationship with him is so much better. And so from that point on, that made me want to strive to be different and pursue my faith a lot deeper and just start asking the hard questions and realizing that there's so much more to just believing in the Lord. You also have to um, want to be with Him and want to act like Him. Being a mentor to younger girls has always been something I've loved to do. Having a girl that you can look up to that's been in that same situation as you or is in that same stage of life is just really cool. I definitely found a new way to be more involved with my youth group. I was able to help start a Big Sis Little Sis program and it's a way that girls can just get to have a little Bible study or just ask some questions. But you also got to know about them and get to see them outside of church. I only recently came to know Christ. My family were never Christians. And Allison was kind of one of the first people who actually felt comfortable, sat down, like talking just about Jesus and my faith. I never really had done that with anyone. I would go to school and I would not say the like, nicest words and gossip was definitely in my everyday life. And then Allison came along and I had someone to talk to that I didn't have to talk about parties or just crazy stories that I really didn't want to listen to. So I got a friend that I could talk to about Jesus. With like the conversations I've started having with her, I've been able to talk to other people and share my faith with them. Allison really helped me realize that God needs to be the foundation in your life. She had been through the motions that I've been through. I think without Allison, this last semester, I probably would have fallen and gone with the crowd. With her helping me and walking me through this last year, it really helped me realize the person that I want to become. Being able to have these opportunities, fostering relationships with girls and discipling them and just showing them the Lord has been so awesome. And it's nothing I've done, it's all through the Lord. Just the way I've seen lives being changed, I'm so encouraged in my faith and just constantly push forward to be a light in my own community. Here is my hope for you. And it isn't just my hope, it's actually God's too. That you would see that you are a leader. And I know that word might terrify you. Honestly, as a leader, I am terrified by it too, still. This book is actually full of people who were terrified to lead. Timothy was one of them. The church had just started after Jesus died and he was charged with leading many people in the church and he was scared and Paul wrote him a letter and said to him, let no one look down on you because you are young, but set an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. See, our leadership doesn't happen because we have great big visions or because we're extra gifted. Our leadership happens because we set an example. Leadership is being contagious. And you can lead people and be contagious with the wrong things. But to be contagious with a life that is loving, that is pure, that is holy, that, that is unconditionally given and surrendered to God, that is full of words that empower and encourage rather than tear down, that is full of faith that actually believes that God is real and powerful and able to move into our lives and other people's lives. 
that kind of contagious life, you will lead people. You will influence them. You will be contagious in their lives. They will want to be like you. They will want to be like God. And they will want to know the God that you serve. It's so rare to see people that are fully surrendered and on mission and giving their lives away. But just like Allison, it wasn't that she had a lot of head knowledge or that she was extra special gifted. It's that she fell in love with God and so she was gonna give that away to a few other people. It's not giving it away to the whole wide world, it's giving it away to the people that are already in your lives. How do you go lead your friends and be contagious? Because I'll tell you what, you already are. And I'm talking to those of you that are extra quiet, that are extra reserved. You lead people, people watch you, people watch your life and they come to conclusions about it. And the power of surrendering your life to Jesus is you get to give away something that can actually produce change in people. It's hope and peace and life like we talked about in Romans. It's vision, dreams, and purpose like we talked about in Hebrews. It is special, unique gifts that you get to bring that God has put in you like we talked about in Corinthians. This is the story of God and all these incredible stories that you've gotten to hear of everyday girls that are living this out. They're examples of this light and hope that they get to bring to the world. And you have that same potential. We want to see you lead well, to be contagious for a God who is worth surrendering for. I decided to go on this trip to the Czech Republic with my church because um, my friends were going. We find out that they're one of the most atheistic countries in the world. I didn't realize how um, untouched that part of Europe was. This was a completely different experience. From the moment we got off the plane, you could tell that the Czech Republic is a very hard country trying to share God's love and talk about Christianity was kind of hard. Our goal in the Czech Republic on our trip was to go to these gymnasiums, which are their high schools. To graduate, they have to know English, so having someone who actually is fluent in English is really helpful, so we came there, went there to help them. We were going to talk with students our age, not knowing what to expect from them, like if they're gonna judge you, if they're gonna get mad at you. And I was afraid that because of the language barrier, we weren't gonna be able as a team to really reach out um, as fully as we would hope. Whenever you talk with them, you just tell each other about your cultures and how they're different. If possible, we would be able to talk about Christianity and to show them that we as Christians are not that different from other people who aren't um, religious or have a pronounced faith. I lost the fear when I, when I realized that um, they are exactly like us. And just because we live somewhere else doesn't mean that we should be fearful of sharing the gospel. And it was so awesome to realize that the people are just like us and to have those conversations with them. And you don't think you're really making an impact, but one day at one of the schools I went to, it was me and these two other guys, and we were just talking. One of the things he said was, my friends and I heard you say you're from a church. Like, we were wondering, we didn't want to ask you, but are you a believer? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, wow, that's crazy. You're the first believer I've ever spoken to. And this kid's like older than me. He's like 17 or 18, and he's never spoken with a believer in his life, which was really like hard to wrap my mind around. The trip definitely helped give me the courage to talk with, um, kids at my school, I realized in this situation I'd have more power than an adult would to reach them and to show them that there's someone out there that really cares and loves for them even though they can't see him. I would spend time with God more than I do here. It showed me that I have, if I have time there, I'll have time here to like dive into the Word. And it also helped me like grow spiritually with, I think, talking to people. On the way back to America, I was thinking like how I don't normally have those kind of conversations with um, people that I don't know or even my friends. After the trip, I talked about that feeling with my friends and um, 
it was kind of a mutual thing about why it took us going to another country to be able to share God's word like that. It really changed the way that I looked at sharing the gospel. You aren't capable of changing the world, but God in you and through you, he can reach the world. I believe in you. I believe that if you are following him with all of your heart, no matter your age, no matter your life stage, no matter the struggle that you've been through, no matter the mistakes you've made, no matter the family that you come from, no matter what is stacked against you, I believe you will shift eternity if you follow this God. In Hebrews 10, he describes how we are going to run this race, how we're going to stay in the fight, how we're going to lead our people. And he talks about this confidence that we have in verse 19, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, since we are right with God, since we get to go to our Father, since our identity is sure, we're confident. And since we have this priest over the house of God, since we are made right with him, let us draw near with a clean conscience, no more guilt, no more shame, no more condemnation. We go near to God. And then let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Let's not be people that doubt. Let's trust our God. Let's believe him for great things. And then let us consider how to stir one another up. See, we need each other. We cannot do this alone. That's why he built the church. He built the local church so that you would have community to do this with you. So that you can build other people up in their faith and they can build you up in yours. We're supposed to be in this incredible story with each other. I love the girls that went together to the Czech Republic. How much more fun to dream with your good friends about how you can have an impact for God. And I know some of you may not have those friends in place yet. Pray for them, look for them. So what would it look like for you to find a group of girls and dream together about how you could reach your school, about how you could reach your neighbors, about how you could reach your sports team? What would it look like for you to grab a few people and to tell them about Jesus if they've never heard? This story is too good to miss and you will be around people that I will never meet. You will be around people that your preacher will never meet. You will be around people that God has placed you there for the purpose that they might know God and have a hope and have a future like we have. That confidence that grows in us because we know God, go give that away. How great is it that Allison's one dream to mentor girls has had a ripple effect? So many more girls know Christ because she used her gifts and followed God's leading. Now, can you imagine what those girls, filled with God's love and spirit, will do in their communities, schools, and relationships? And what about the mission team to the Czech Republic? Just like Jenny said, they had a dream together and God moved. They learned, met some incredible new people, and had the opportunity to share their faith in new ways. God is calling you and your friends to be contagious leaders for Him too. There's no reason to be afraid. You have the God of the universe in you, and He's calling you to significance. As you close your Bible study time together, talk about what fun it can be if you and your friends teamed up to give God's love away. Where could God lead you? How can you encourage each other to dream big don't miss out on what God is doing. Jump in and play your part. Thanks for watching.